Welcome to section 3 of chapter 6, which is use similar polygons. Chapter 6 is all about similarity. So this is the first section that we're actually jumping right into similarity. So the first thing that we should probably talk about is what does it mean for polygons to be similar? Well, you'll see the definition at the top. Similar polygons have angles that are congruent, but the sides are proportional. So what that means is all the sides change by the same factor. They're all multiplied by 2. They're all divided by 5. Um, that's what it means for the sides to be proportional. And then the angles all have to be congruent. If two polygons are similar, we use a little tilde as the notation. So it's like the top part of the congruency sign. So example number 1, you're going to see that you have two polygons that are similar. So you know that notice that all the angles are congruent. So I have this angle congruent to this one, this angle is congruent to that one, this angle is congruent to that one, and then the last pair of angles are also congruent. We also know that the sides are proportional. So this side of 5 corresponds to this side of 10. This side of 2 corresponds to that side of 4. This side of 3 corresponds to 6. And then I have the 1 that corresponds to the 2. I notice 5 over 10 is 1 half, 2 over 4 is 1 half, 3 over 6 is 1 half, and then 1 half is still 1 half. So this is the way to show that the sides are proportional. So they all have the same ratio. So these two figures are similar. And what you notice is what it's going to look like is it's going to look like you took a smaller figure and you blew it up to get a bigger figure. So that figure on the left, it's just we enlarged it to get the figure on the right. The sides all changed by the same factor, and the angles all stayed congruent. So looking at example two, are the polygons shown similar? Well, we have to know, are the angles congruent, and are the sides proportional? The sides are definitely proportional, because they're all congruent. I have three and three, four and four, three and three again, four and four again. So if I wrote that out, I would have three corresponds to three, four corresponds to four, three corresponds to three, and 4 corresponds to 4 again. So the sides are proportional. That definitely checks out. But are the angles congruent? Well, it looks like on the figure on the right, it appears like all the angles are right angles. That is certainly not true of the figure on the left. So angles are not congruent. So this means that the figures are not similar. So the sides are proportional, but the angles are not congruent. Okay, so let's look at example three. It says, first, write a similarity statement. So a similarity statement is very similar to a congruency statement. When you wrote uh, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF, we're going to do the same thing here. The first triangle can be written however you want. So I'm going to say triangle PQR. Mm, wrong symbol. So triangle PQR is similar to triangle. Okay, so PQR, I went three tick marks, one tick mark, two. So I gotta do the same thing, three, one, two. So L, M, N. So triangle L, M, N. Okay, so if these triangles are similar, it means all their angles are congruent. So B says list all pairs of congruent angles. So I have angle P is gonna be congruent to well, P is three tick marks, so L is three tick marks. And then I have angle Q is congruent to angle, so Q is one tick mark, M is one tick mark. And I'll also notice that this is true in the similarity statement. Q is congruent to M, P is congruent to L, and then the last one is R is congruent to N. So R is congruent to angle N. So this is exactly the same as when we did a um, when we did a congruency statement. It's exactly the same. Part C is a little different. It says write the ratios of the corresponding side lengths in a statement of proportionality. So all that means is list up the corresponding sides. Well, I know that PQ corresponds PQ first and second corresponds to LM. 
Next, I know that QR corresponds, so QR, second and third, corresponds to MN. And then last one, PR, first and third, corresponds to LN, first and third. So that just means that all of these uh, pairs of sides have the same ratio. So let's check. PQ is 10.8, LM is 5.4, QR is 18.4, MN is 9.2, PR is 20.8, and LN is 10.4. If you simplify all of these, they become 2 over 1. And in fact, this is called the scale factor, which we learned last section. So all of the sides change by a factor of 2. So anytime you're asked for the statement of proportionality, it's this part right here. This part on the right was just for us to check. Okay, so let's move on. Okay, so the scale factor, which we learned last video, but we're going to talk about again, is the ratio of the lengths of the corresponding sides and similar polygons. So in the example that we just did, scale factor was 2 to 1. So I took two corresponding sides and I put them in a ratio. Looking at example 4, think for the next 10 seconds if you can find the scale factor. Okay, so we are told that the figures are similar. And that's what this right here means. To find the scale factor, we just need two sides that correspond. Well, we're only given two sides, 10 and 20. So my scale factor is going to be 10 over 20, but I need to simplify that. Both of those are divisible by 10, so it becomes 1 over 2. So the scale factor is just 1 half. Okay, let's turn the page. So example 5 says, find the scale, for scale factor from example 3. Well, we already did that. So we already did that in example 3. It ended up being 2 over 1. So let's move on to example 6. It says, in the figure below, triangle NXY is similar to triangle NMO. It says, find the scale factor. Okay, so this one is trickier because we have two overlapping triangles. We're looking at NXY, so this little triangle here, and then we're looking at NMO, this big triangle here. So before we find the scale factor, I want to write the statement of proportionality. So I want to write which sides correspond. So from the, the, uh, sorry, from the statement we are given, we know that nx corresponds to nm. nx corresponds to nm. I know that xy corresponds to mo. And I know that ny corresponds to no. Now I need to start filling in what I know. Okay, nx I know is 8. Nm is 8. Add 5, so that's 13. XY is A. MO is 12. And I'm getting all this just from the figure. NY is B. And then NO is this entire side. So it's going to be B add 6. Okay, so the scale factor, that just means find two sides that correspond. So out of these three ratios I have, this is the only ratio where I know both the numerator and the denominator. Here I have an A, here I have a B, a B, that doesn't help. So the scale factor is 8 over 13. And then in the second part of the problem it says, use this scale factor to find A and B. If I'm finding two variables, I'm going to need two equations. So I'm going to take the first half of the equation, 8 over 13 equals A over 12. And then I also need an equation for B. Well, I don't know A, so I'm going to ignore that middle um, fraction. And I'm going to do 8 over 13 again is equal to B over B add 6. So right now, pause the video and complete these two proportions. Solve both proportions. Good luck.
Okay, so on the first one, if I multiply 8 and 12, I get 96. 13 and A is 13A. If I divide by 13, I get A equals 96 over 13. Just leave your answer like that. It doesn't simplify. Don't give a decimal. Don't make it a mixed number. That's it. Second one is a little trickier. 13 multiplied by B is 13B. And then I have 8 multiplied by B add 6. That wasn't B plus B, so hopefully we knew that. So this becomes 13B equals 8B add 48. If I subtract 8B, I get 5B equals 48. So B equals 48 over 5. So hopefully you got those two right. That was just a review. That was nothing new. We did that in section one. We did that in section two. Now we're doing it for the third time in section three. And you did learn it last year in algebra one. So that should have gone okay. Okay, so we have a few more things to talk about with similar figures. So the next is a theorem. If two polygons are similar, then their scale factor which is just the ratio of the sides, is the same as the ratio of their perimeters. So whatever the ratio of the sides is, the ratio of the perimeters is exactly the same. So let's move down and look at example 7. So let's consider the diagram below, where ABCD is similar to PQRS. If the perimeter of ABCD is 33, find the perimeter of PQRS. So here I, sorry, here I know the perimeter is 33. Here I want to know what the perimeter is. Okay, well, we know that the ratio of the sides is 3 to 8. Okay, so BC, this side right here, is going to correspond to QR. BC corresponds to QR in the similarity statement. So my scale factor is 3 to 8. That's the ratio of the sides. Well, by the previous theorem, that's also going to be the ratio of the perimeters. Okay, so ABCD has a side of 3. It also has a perimeter of 33. So this is the sides. This is the perimeters. And then PQRS, I don't know the perimeter. So now I need to use cross products. I get 3x is equal to, and then 33 multiplied by 8 is 264. If I divide by 3, I get x equals 88. So the perimeter of PQRS is 88 centimeters. So whatever the ratio of the sides is, that's equal to the perimeters. And this leads us to the last key idea of the video. The scale factor for similar polygons, so that's the one found using the sides, applies to special segments, so altitude, medians, etc., perimeters. So we'll be using that idea when we come to class. When you all come to class, we'll be doing a few examples, and then you guys will be working on your own. Please make sure you bring any questions that you have to class. See you tomorrow.